Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. I set up another big paint review originally as this week's video, but I've been stretching myself a little too thin with all my responsibilities and as a result, my body is rebelling. Which makes things super difficult for me and is a clear sign that I need to take a step back or it's only going to get worse. You see, I have idiopathic hypersomnia, which is honestly just more easily described as narcolepsy, but not because that's really what it is, narcolepsy, but not. When I talk about this to people, I usually tell them that I have narcolepsy just so they have some frame of reference, but even that frame of reference is a bit askew. When you think narcolepsy, you probably think of someone who very suddenly falls asleep and goes tumbling down, often used as a comedy prop in movies, but not really discussed in any length. Actually, what you're thinking of is an extreme version of one single symptom of narcolepsy called cataplexy, where a sufferer will suddenly lose control of their muscles. The thing is, I did just say that was an extreme version and that it's a single symptom. Not all people who have sleep disorders like mine and like narcolepsy suffer from cataplexy, and not all people who have cataplexy lose full muscle control. More often than not, what will happen is they'll just temporarily lose slight control of a small muscle, like maybe you're holding a glass and your wrist suddenly goes limp for just a moment. Usually, cataplexy is triggered by strong emotional responses like laughing or crying or yelling, so a lot of people who have cataplexy but are undiagnosed will subconsciously cut themselves off from large emotional responses as a way to self-protect. But I'm getting off track here. The point is, with narcolepsy and idiopathic hypersomnia, the real problem is sleep. You see, I can and will fall asleep upwards of 16 hours total across the span of a day, and there's very little I can do to stop it. I do take medication that very much helps stave off the worst of it, but sometimes my body will just take the wheel and make me pass out anyway. And I'll usually stay down for two or more hours at a time against my will. Saying it like that, it may seem obvious to you that I have a sleep condition, but the first time a doctor recommended I see a sleep specialist because they thought I had narcolepsy, I thought it was a joke. Like you, I thought narcolepsy was just boom, down on the ground, asleep now, but that's not what happens for me. What was happening at that time when I was in a scary place medically was that I was completely and fully losing my ability to speak suddenly. I'd get frustrated at this and start to cry. I could understand everything anyone was saying to me, but I had no real way to communicate. Interestingly enough, I can actually still use sign language when I'm in this state, but I'm pretty much incapable of verbal communication and nobody else I know can understand me when I sign. It would take a few minutes, but after that big warning sign, I'd fall asleep. For a little while, I'd still be aware of what was happening around me and I'd be fully conscious of the conversations going on, but I'd also know that I was absolutely actually asleep and unable to respond. Eventually, I'd wake up, my brain would be a bit scrambled, and I'd still have difficulty speaking for a while, but then I'd be better. I'd basically be all better, really. During the in-between stages, my head would feel a little stuffed with cotton, and it took us a while to realize that I'd start saying I'm sleepy almost unconsciously for maybe a half an hour before I'd finally pass out, but we didn't put any of it together as symptoms. We also didn't really think of my memory loss as anything other than being kind of absent-minded, but it turns out that having a brain that's basically always convinced it's sleep deprived will do a number on your ability to remember things. So anyway, I went to a sleep specialist a few years ago and she had me hooked up to a bunch of cables like a weird robot and did some tests. Then she had me come back and do some more tests. Eventually, she determined that I very clearly have idiopathic hypersomnia because I can fall asleep no problem at the drop of a hat if unmedicated, and because of my falling asleep against my will. There were also other symptoms that I didn't realize I had. Remember how I said that when I fall asleep for a while, I'm still actually fully aware of everything going on, but I definitely know I'm asleep? Turns out that's something called sleep paralysis. Most people find it super scary because they don't know why they can't move and aren't sure about what's going on, but to me, I was more freaked out about having lost my ability to speak and didn't really worry about not being able to move while I knew I was asleep. This symptom also only affects me as I'm falling into a forced sleep and doesn't occur any other time, but that's not necessarily the only way it can happen. But why do I not technically have narcolepsy even if I still fall asleep randomly against my will? Because narcolepsy, specifically, is determined by your brain pretty much immediately slipping into REM sleep when you pass out. My brain doesn't go immediately, it takes at least more than 15 minutes. And because of that, my brain is technically different than that of someone who has narcolepsy as it is defined, even though I share nearly all of the symptoms. 
As my doctor has informed me, it is actually important medically to have the proper definition because each sleep disorder has its own chemical imbalances, meaning that one treatment that might help ease the symptoms for someone in one category might not work for someone in another because they technically have different chemical and mental imbalances. She talked about it for a while, but it basically came out science, 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 and I lost a lot of the details. Memory problems, remember? It was super interesting though. What I've learned throughout the process of my diagnosis and treatment is that there are a lot of people out there who have sleep disorders but don't necessarily recognize it because the signs aren't what they'd expect. Let me tell you some of the ones I had that we ignored for years. When I was in high school, I had a lot of trouble sleeping at night and would actually stay awake for weeks at a time. The only sleep I'd get at all would be on the school bus to and from home or small tiny snippets during class that I would swear to you were an hour long, but turned out to be less than a minute each. I was taking what are known as micro naps and they were just enough to reset my brain and keep me going after I woke up, but then I wouldn't be able to fall asleep when I was supposed to. During that time period of extreme sleep weirdness, I would also have hallucinations as I was starting to finally get to sleep at night of things like monsters in my room, which for sure would wake me right back up and keep me from ever getting those continuous seven or eight hours. These are called hypnagogic hallucinations and are often connected to sleep disorders like mine. For years, my hunky and all of my friends would joke that there was no point in watching a movie with me because I'd always fall asleep in the middle, even if it was super interesting. My forgetfulness, even of really, really, really important things, was a sign we didn't do much except poke fun at. The fact that I'd sometimes say sentences incorrectly and jumble up the words in the wrong order or swap the first letters of different words with each other without meaning to. The fact that if I'm woken up before my body naturally wakes up, I'm incredibly disoriented, sometimes quite nauseous, actively incapable of feeling any sort of complex emotion beyond a primal anger and sense of being attacked in some way, and I usually physically and mentally can't speak for a while. Looking back at it all at once with each of these symptoms listed together, it's suddenly obvious that I've got a sleep disorder. But at the time, it was just how things were. It all escalated at a slow pace and sort of became normal life. We never would have thought to look into a sleep specialist if that one doctor who happened to see me in the clinic one single time and used to help run tests in a sleep center hadn't mentioned I might have narcolepsy. Thanks, whoever you were, you helped me get answers. As a result of my condition, it's basically impossible for me to work a normal job because when you tell them I will go crazy and fall down at least once a day, they pretty much wrap up that interview right there. As far as I've been able to discuss though, I don't qualify for disability. I also find it hard to commit to things that are on a strict time schedule, though I do my best to set alarms and wake up for them and take naps once we arrive. And I know I also frustrate the people around me because while they know that this is something I deal with, it's an inconvenience. When someone you're having a good time with suddenly needs to go to sleep for a couple of hours, that can put a wrench into your plans. Now imagine that happens every time you see them and it's entirely unpredictable. Even with medication, it's not entirely preventable and it's currently completely incurable. I also can't really drive myself anywhere if it takes longer than an hour because being in cars is one of my biggest weaknesses and it pretty much always triggers a sleep event. You can make all the plans and set all the alarms and have all the intentions you want, but at the end of the day, you're basically always at the mercy of your own body and have to work within whatever time it lets you have. My schedule is erratic at best, but I try to just accept that if I'm awake, then I'm going to enjoy that time rather than being mad about the times I'm not and can't control it. So anyway, uh, I guess what I'm saying is everyone should probably look into seeing a sleep specialist at least once in their life. Just because getting advice on your sleep habits anyway is useful no matter who you are, but discovering you have a problem you didn't even know about can help change your life. As for the art in this video, of course, the materials used are all linked in the doobly-doo down below. Because my symptoms have been ratcheting up lately and I've been taking multiple unplanned naps throughout the week, I may have a couple of simpler videos planned until my body finds its equilibrium. As we learned back when I did my depression comics, it's always best to listen to the signs and not push yourself beyond what's healthy. Stay safe out there, friends, and listen to what your body tells you. If you have questions about this, I'll do my best to answer what I can, but I'm also hoping that this clicks with some of you in the same way that I really could have used before my symptoms had progressed to where they are now. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and health. Bye!